season. Amen. Some t- have you ever felt like you was just born at the wrong time? And see, it doesn't take a drama team to excite me. It does a lot of the church world today. How many people know what a drama team is? They get up there and sing a temporary song. And they have them out there doing this. And that excites some people. Amen. Don't nobody have to teach me how to shout. Amen. <laughs> Don't nobody have to call me in the other room and teach me how to speak in tongues. I think I'm a little too old fashioned for the crowd that we got today. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. My goodness, I don't have to have a full orchestra or a five-piece band to feel the Spirit. Yes, Amen. Me See, I remember, the, and I thought about this a while ago, whenever Aunt Joyce and Brother David was up here, they were singing, what would I do without Jesus and the God on the mountain, still God in the valley. And I can remember the day when the church would have been having a Holy Ghost fit. Amen. Amen. But it takes more than a guitar and a few old songs to turn the church on today as we know it. Amen? Amen. Got to have that new fancy preacher right out of the cemetery. Amen? Got to have that new, got to have that song leader and got to get that beat just right. Amen? Amen? Listen, I know all about the beat. I was raised up in a church that had the beat. Amen? Amen. And I saw them dance and I saw them shout and on Sunday morning, on Monday morning I heard them cuss. Amen? Amen? So I learned a long time ago. Now, not all of them. But I learned a long time ago, it ain't in the shout. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. It ain't in the shout. You can shout till your head falls off and still be lost as a ball in high weeds. Amen. Right. Go, go, don't go to one, but check into some of the footage of some of these rock concerts. Just because you're feeling it emotionally don't mean it's the Spirit of God. It might be a spirit. Amen. But that don't necessarily mean it's the Spirit of God. But I said all that to say this. I think I'm a little old-fashioned because I don't have to have a drama team to feel the Spirit. I don't have to have a certain song or a certain song leader or a certain beat on an electric guitar to feel the Spirit. Amen. When you get to talking about Jesus, that's good enough for me. Amen. When you get to singing about the blood, that's good enough for me. When you get to talking about Calvary, that's enough to light my fire. Amen. And if it takes more than that for you, I think I'd find me somewhere at an old-fashioned altar and say, God, rekindle the fire that used to burn inside of me. Amen. Amen. Somewhere along the line, God, it took me. I've got to the place where it takes more than you to excite me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, if it takes more than Jesus and what He did at the cross to excite you, you need to re-examine your relationship with God. Amen. 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 Because it's the old rugged cross that made the difference. Yes. Amen. And sometimes you might find yourself laying on your deathbed, yeah. not able to shout. Amen. Right. King David could dance. Uh-huh. You remember when they brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, he had himself a Holy Ghost fit. Sure did. Amen. But he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. He didn't say I'm going to dance a jig so that I don't sin. Amen. He didn't say I'm going to play pretty on my harp so that I don't sin. He said, I'm going to take your word. And I'm going to hide it in my heart so that I might not sin against you. I'm going to allow your word to be a lamp under my feet and a light into my path. Amen. I'm going to keep your word. I'm going to keep your precepts. I'm going to build my relationship with you upon your word. Because, honey, there are going to be times you don't feel the song. You don't have a song to sing. But if you got the word of God down inside of you, you can go on a little bit farther. Amen. Honey, it's the word of God's going to get you through. Amen. The word of God's going to get you through. The Word of God is what's going to get you through. Right. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen. He'll go on down. He says, everything that you see that was made could not have been made had it not been for Him. Talking about the Word that was in the beginning. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And there was darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Bible says, and God spoke. The Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters and God spoke. Yes, Let there be light. Amen. And there was light. Yes. Sometimes I need God's Word to speak in my life uh-huh. and so that there'll be light where that darkness is at. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you're going to be ready to get out of here, you better have the Word of God. Amen. You better know it for yourself. You, be, you better not just depend on what the preacher says because what the preacher says in the day and time that we live in may not be in the book. Amen. 
It may listen, 99% of what you're getting from the television may not be in the book. Amen. Amen. Go to the book and check it out for yourself. Make sure that what you're hearing preached is in the Word of God. That's right. Amen. If they don't have any word to back it up, and I'm talking about King James Version. Amen. Yes. I ain't talking about good news for modern man. Amen. I ain't talking about the new international perversion. I'm talking about the closest thing we have to the Word of God. If it ain't in there, don't follow it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Have I got your attention tonight? If I have, go with me to Luke, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. Luke, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. And I'm only going to talk to you for just a few minutes. If Brother Bill was here, he'd say that sounds good and don't mean nothing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Luke, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. Say amen when you find it. Amen. <clears throat> Luke, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. Luke 12 and 13. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke 12 and 13. And one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide inheritance with me. See, somebody died and they're already fighting over the money. <coughs> Amen. Boy, some things just don't change, do they? Amen. Amen. Somebody died and they're already fighting over the money. He says, Speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Uh -huh. You hear that? Yes. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Uh -huh. <clears throat> your life does not consist with how much money you have in your bank account. Somebody say, thank God for that. Amen. Your life is more than the car you drive. Amen. Your life is more than the place you live, the house that you have. Amen. Your life consists more of than just that fancy suit that you put on every Sunday. Amen? Amen? Your life consists more of that. It's more than money. It's more than food. It's more than raiment. Yes, it is. And He spake a parable unto them, saying... The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink. And be merry. Sounds like he's getting ready to retire, don't he? Sounds like he worked his whole life building up his riches, building up his, you know, his supplies. And he had found himself with so many, it don't sound like he's ever going to hit another lick of the snake, does it? He said, I'm going to say to my soul, take thine ease. Retire. Live it good. You know, live fat on the hog now. More likely this man spent his whole life not having time for God because he was too busy working. <clears throat> He was too busy laying up treasures. He was too busy filling his bars. But you know, we got the same thing going on today. Yeah. Amen. We got people, they work so many hours, they don't even have time to enjoy the money that they make. No. Amen. They spend their whole life working and they don't have time for God. They think somewhere in their mind, a lot of them think, I'll have time for God later. Uh -huh. Amen. Some of them think that somewhere down the road, when I'm not so busy, but see, even this man, now that he's not going to be so busy, now it's his time. Yeah. Now he's going to spend some time relaxing. Mm -hmm. I've had people over the years tell me they couldn't come to church on Sunday because that's the only day they had off. That was their day. Oh, that's funny. I thought that was the Lord's day. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. That was their day to relax. That's the only day they had to go fishing. That's the only day they had to use that big boat. Well, keep on. You ain't going to need that boat where you're going. Oh, yeah. Amen. Right. If you don't take time out for God... And this man right here, he had spent his whole life working. Note to how many hours he put in a week. He was up at daylight, worked till dark, may work past dark. <clears throat> and he said, now I'm going to have to tear down my barns and I'm going to have to build greater. And he said, I'm going to say to my soul, well, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. He worked and he saved, and he saved and he worked, and now it's time to retire. 
Amen. Well, what God say? Verse 20 says, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Now why did he start talking about this in the first place? He had a young man come up to him and say, Lord, settle this dispute with us. Make him divide the inheritance with me. See, these, these guys here, they're fighting over the stuff that a man just like this man in this parable had left behind. He had worked his whole life for what? So that he could leave it, but leave his, his junk behind for his kids to fight over. Amen? I was at a funeral one time in Owensboro. Actually, it happened before I got there. But there was a couple of the, of the boys of the family, the man that had passed away, a couple of his sons, had had a fist fight out back because one of them showed up in a shirt of his daddy's that he wanted. Amen. Not even cold and dead. Not even good and cold and in the grave. Amen. And they're fighting over their stuff. And the Bible says that this man asked him what, you know, divide, make him divide this inheritance. And Jesus goes into telling them about this parable about this man that worked his whole life and he thought he had enough. And he said, now, starting from now on, I'm going to take it easy. I got enough stuff to last me for many years to come. But he didn't know this, but he didn't have many years. You see, you ain't promised tomorrow. I'm not promised tomorrow. You can spend your whole life working. Work yourself to death. I started to say work your full head off, but I'd get a letter over that, so I ain't going to say it. Work yourself to death. Amen? And then just before you get ready to enjoy any of it, you're dead on the door now and your kids are fighting over it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah, right. And this man right here, he, he expected to have a tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But God said this night, there'll be no more tomorrows for you. Mm -hmm. If tonight was your last night, and you stood before the throne of God, what would be the most important thing? How much money you have in your bank account? No. You see, they're going to open a book there when you stand before God. And it's not going to be a book of figures and stocks and bonds and readings of Wall Street and the different things of the world. It's not going to be a book of how faithful you were to your job. It's not going to be a book on how, how much money you had in your bank account or, or what kind of home you had or what kind of car you drove or what kind of clothes you wore. It's going to be the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? And if you've spent your whole life like this rich man had, spent his whole life making sure he had plenty for his old age and he didn't even make it to his old age, Thinking he had it tomorrow when he didn't. That's the way we live life most of the time. Amen. That's the truth. We always thinking, well, we got tomorrow. How many times have you heard people say, I, I'll get right with the Lord later? If they didn't say it with their mouth, they said it with their actions. Amen. I got plenty of time. I've told you this story a hundred times. I tell it to you again. Say, Brother Billy, I get tired of hearing it. Well, I'm sorry. Brother Paul Levine was in a revival service and there was a 16-year-old girl that was there under the, under the conviction of the power of the Holy Ghost. And he tried his best to get her to come to the altar. Sister Joyce, he begged and pleaded with her and she said, no, I'm just 16 years old. I've got plenty of time. i got plenty of time. i got a lot of living to do. I just got my driver's license. Tears rolling down her face saying there'll be time for God later. After that service, five miles down the road, her car... Going too fast around the curve, left the road and hit a tree head on. She died instantly. Sixteen years old. Sixteen years old, but I've got plenty of time. There'll be plenty of tomorrows. Don't you think that that's what this rich man thought? You can tell by his actions, you can tell by his words that he thought he had plenty of tomorrows left to get right with God. He thought he had plenty of tomorrows. I'll get right with God later. He didn't have time for 